Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. Yeah, this is the Ramble, and it's live from Harlem in New York City, and I'm Alex. Yeah, I have to hurry. Hello, Lori Thompson. I have to hurry because we have to do this, and then I have to go to PT. Which is, oh, physical therapy. And I hate physical therapy because today I've got to tell the physical therapy person. Yes. That I'm sorry, but it's not working. You're not doing it. You're giving, you know, you got to know when to cut bait. I mean, I've been doing it every day and I've only been getting worse. I I get out to walk and my legs uh, are weak, you know, uh, and I've done all the exercises. I mean, religiously every day. Yeah, that's that's hard to understand, except when you think that that's like an industry, probably a multi-billion dollar industry. Yeah. Physical therapy. And you get them in conjunction with the insurance companies, see? Mm-hmm. And then there's just all kinds of things they can bill to that. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know. Yeah. And, uh, oh, you know, some we were having trouble with the sound earlier. And I think uh-huh. I think I found my problem. It was on my side. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate you taking the heat. What, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, Sometimes it seems like. Um, like I do this uh, radio show down here. It's just a once a week thing yeah. at a classic rock station. And sometimes I will leave the room and the board will correct itself. Like yeah. I can't well, get it to I, do something. So, you know, I just take a break and then I come back and it's fixed itself. What I did is I turned down the volume and uh, here. And so that's yeah. why you were so low. We were having trouble with her being low but i can't blame her now god damn it you like to be, you like to be able to blame the woman oh yeah, yeah you know uh, and and also when, when something goes wrong like that and everything seems like you always do it like mm-hmm. you know this is the way we always do it what's wrong and then there's that added level of level of frustration it's your, it's your fault woman yeah chick blame yeah. on the chick yeah and the guys will never admit they're wrong. I know, well, yeah, I, you know, I, I hate those things, generalizations, I call them. But I hate, you know, women always do this, guys do that. But, uh, yeah, I think that somehow, is it because you think it diminishes our respect or admiration for you if you don't know all the answers? Well, that I don't know, you know, but what the hell, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Anyway, and I'm out of sync, I think, a little bit here. Uh, sync? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I give. A, see, I go out of sync, and I never can figure out why. Yeah, because that means when the audio, when what you're I saying. I went and got a more powerful machine, and it won't work. I'm having yeah. technical problems today, folks. But. Well, we have, uh, on, on our cable system, mm-hmm. that happens all the time to where we just are used to it. Like someone will drop, drop a brush. On yeah. the table, and you'll hear it 20 minutes later. Oh, yeah, that was that brush. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I mean, I can always, uh, like, uh, switch over here on pictures here. There we go. And let's see. Am I there? I'm more in sync than I was. Oh, well, not really. Not in, really. In sync. In sync like the band, oh. and they're bringing back in sync. And, you know, you could be, and you're already in sync. Yeah. You should well, anyway, see, I'm out of sync, folks. That's weird. I give up. Everything's going you, wrong today. Does it give you that sinking feeling, though? That's it, what it really does. Got. Anyway, so don't mind if I'm out of sync, folks. Okay. Screw it. I don't mind. Screw it. So how are you doing good. down there in Florida? Well, everybody, see, I can tell when CNN, I'm not a big watcher of CNN or Fox, thank goodness, but I can tell when the coverage around the country on CNN about our weather mm-hmm. is just crazed because my friends and you were kind to uh text about our whereabouts Mm -hmm. and 
we don't we don't get it. We're in the panhandle. It's like this. As soon as I say it's a safe little corner, then it'll go crazy. But uh, we we don't get much of the hurricane activity that the east side gets. Yeah. So, but did you get? You must have gotten wind though. We we get. That's the reason we're indoors today. Here we have wind like heck of crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and but there's no hurricane now. No, it's kind of like we get the. In other words, the, where where are you exactly? You're up near the Panhandle, right? Yes, and we live. You can imagine, uh, which it's about uh, fifty miles south of Pensacola. Mm-hmm. And if you drew a line east to west between Mobile and Tallahassee, we'd mm-hmm. be in the middle. It's near Destin. Okay. And he, yeah, t- no, we're, we're, we're two miles from. My husband is trying to mansplain. No, but <laughs> ten, ten miles from 40 Pensacola. Miles from Pensacola. For, uh, Forty miles from Pensacola. Yes. Oh, okay. So, I, if I looked at Pensacola, then where uh-huh. would I look north? Uh, no, you would look south from south Pensacola, Pensacola, and there we would be. Okay. And uh, yeah, we don't. We have because I was been. watching all those maps on TV, you know, and they were. They were showing the maps on TV, and they were going here, and we're going. This is where it's going, and I'm. I said, I don't know where she lives, but it looks like it's missing her. Yeah, it yeah. does, you know, and it can look like it's headed straight for us. And this last one, Milton, mm-hmm. did get closer than the others have characteristically, but still, our shingles are intact, and everything. Uh, well, I got get- the sh- I got the shingles once, so <laughs> it's horrible. It's yeah. supposed to be horrible. Yeah, I have, having a shingled roof. I mean, that must be painful. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so I, I uh, got him really out of sync. This is ridiculous. Well, anyway, live with it, folks, if you're watching us. Okay. I, I don't know why I get obsessed by these things, and it throws everything off. I just like to talk to you. But anyway, <laughs> I had these people visit us from Port St. Lucie. Oh, Yeah. They got it bad because what they got were the tornadoes. Okay. Oh, those are, and see, in the Midwest, I am familiar, having lived in Tornado Alley in Illinois, with those, they're a completely different animal. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Well, so, they, they had hurricanes, and the hurricanes caused the tornadoes, I think. That That's often the way it seems to go. Yeah. Uh, but tornadoes, you can see, you can actually see coming. From miles away. I mean, it's a physical... Yeah. And, but, but there's no way you can dodge them. They're going to go where they're going to go. Oh, yeah. You might be able to outdrive them. I don't know. I'm not going to try, but... <laughs> yeah. Never well, they have these They have these tornado chasers, you know. Yeah. The story, well, wasn't that movie Twister with Helen yeah. Hunt about yeah. that? Well, yeah. they, well, they actually go and study them and so on. Yeah, but the thing is, you know, I wonder why people live in Tornado Alley. I mean, if you know there are tornadoes, why don't you move to where there aren't tornadoes? Yeah. But every place in the country you go, there's some kind of meteorological negative. Yeah. Associated well, with, like- or not even meteorological. In California, you know, I say, how can you people live with tornadoes? And they'd say, well, how can you live with earthquakes? Right, but earthquakes are so much better. You get no notice, so you don't have to stress. Mm-hmm. You know, it will hit you at the oddest. Nobody time. on television is saying we're expecting a torn a uh, earthquake. An earthquake, today. yeah. yeah. <laughs> your chances of earthquake today on your weather app. Although I have percent. people used to say to me, you know, it's earthquake weather. Well, you know what? There might be some. I mean, I'm not saying that's a statement of fact. I'm just saying that the day we had the earthquake in San Francisco in 89, Mm -hmm. I had taken a drive down the marina. And there's always, always activity at Chrissy Field on the marina. Joggers, dog walkers, everything. And there was silence. So I don't know if that had anything to do, but it's one of those weird things that I made a note before the incident happened. Mm-hmm. Usually you can say, well, I noticed this morning after an earthquake. You were there for the Loma Prieta, right? Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. I lived in the marina, and yeah. I was getting ready to go to the oh, World okay. Series. Yeah, and I was like, it, there was a jolt, but it wasn't major, and then 15 seconds or so later, there was a major jolt where my speakers started off. Were we doing, uh, I guess, were we doing the show then at, at Live no. 5? No. No, that was when you were you were on big, you know you were on uh, hiatus, 
Um, I was working with Perry Stone then. Oh, really? So that was during that hiatus. Yeah, and they, yes, what they of did. course. Let me let me backtrack. Of course, I should know that because I was out of work, and then the earthquake hit, and I said, "I'm going to be still out of work after this is over." <laughs> yeah. You know, and I went. No matter how hard I try. Uh, there, I'm, it's, there's no way to solve it. I, I'm I'm out of work, and uh, everybody's going to be so thrown off by this earthquake that what do I do? Send out my uh, my uh, 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 <laughs> audition tapes, like you know, the while <laughs> ab- the day after the earthquake. I don't think so. You know? Well, you might have gotten a little sympathy attention, you know. Oh. But he just went through that earthquake. Let's listen to it. Yeah, well, I went through that earthquake, and and uh, you know it was what it was. But I I remember I, I you're absolutely right. I wasn't working, and I was between jobs. Yeah, and they put us up in the Mount Sutro is one of the highest places in San Francisco Bay Area. So they put a trailer on Mount Sutro, and the day after the earthquake, we didn't broadcast. Nobody was. Um, KCBS was, but uh, they put the trailer on top of Sutro, and we broadcast there for I think a week. Really? It, yeah, it was a while. Did you, program- did, you, did you have a live studio audience? <laughs> 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 no, but um, our program director and I thought this was nice. See, and we were out of our home. Um, I, I was I lived in a marina, so all of us in my apartment building. Or there were only four units, but yeah. uh, we were out, out of our home, so I was staying with various friends. And the program director would come and pick me up every morning, and then we would drive to radio on Mount Sutro. So it was kind of a neat little vignette. Wow. Yeah, I, of course, I, I should have. You see, I, I, I've gotten to the point in my life where I'm really muddled about my past. It's and, easy to do, man. I mean, and you have and, to. And I should have Google remembered it. that. Of course, I was out of work because I remember that I, you know, the mo- first thought that came to mind was, oh, my God, well, I'm out of work and, and try finding a job after this. Yeah. You know. But there is that period of readjustment where everybody's kind of skittish. Yeah. Yeah. To make decisions. So, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I uh, that, that was a that was a terrible thing. I mean, we I was in the marina. Were you living? Uh-huh. You say you were you, living in the marina yeah. at that time. I was renting in the marina at the time. Of oh, this. okay. Uh, and that's when all the radio stuff went down. I found out that you were leaving, and that was very upsetting to me. And then our our general manager resigned shortly thereafter, mm-hmm. and then they said we're going to bring in this guy from San Jose, and he was a nice person, like to have coffee with or something. There, but he, on the on the air, he was a shock jock. Which is just not my thing at all. Yeah, and, and he was, uh, here, here's what he was doing: he was attempting to be a shock jock, as yeah. opposed to actually being a shock jock. I mean, Howard Stern was a shock jock. Yeah, and well, then and there he, were the people that imitated Howard Stern, and that's who this guy was. Yeah, and he really thrived on produced bits that you would play like two or three times a morning. And he was very good at those produced bits, which, but you're limited in your format and your premise to movie trailers, um, you know, things, things like that. Yeah. When you're doing a parody of something in 30 seconds. Or yeah. six, and so that was not my style either. Yeah. I like reality and wit. It, well, yeah, I think we were a little smarter as a yeah. show than he was. I would agree. <laughs> yeah. What happened, in case people don't know, in my career, I was in San Francisco, and I was uh, I used to be a big shot. You, okay. I, you were a big well, shot. I, I like to use that term because there was a movie called uh, The Roaring Twenties with Humphrey Bogart and Jimmy Cagney. And <sighs> at the end of it, Jimmy Cagney gets shot, and he stumbles down the street, and he stumbles onto the steps of this church where he rolls down and he's dead. And his girlfriend runs up to him, cradles him in her in her arms, and a cop comes along and says, what's his name? And she gave whatever the name was and says, what did he do? And she look, looks up at him and says, he used to be a big shot. You know, and, yeah. and and Warner Brothers always had great last lines in those films. You know, is this the end of Rico? 
uh, yeah. Top of the World, Ma, you know, things like that. And th- th- that one was, uh, I he used to be a big shot. Now, I'm watching this movie one night when I'm out of work. <laughs> and I go, yeah, yeah, I used to be a big shot, right? <laughs> so even on my website, it says he used to be a big shot. That's fun. Yeah, on my face, yeah. uh, Facebook page. Yeah. Well, you, yeah, you still got every, like, every time I went out with you after I met you, mm-hmm. you still get recognized on the street because you had uh, Midnight, not Midnight Blue, but you had Comedy Tonight, which you hosted yeah, Yes, on Comedy DBS. Tonight, yeah. yeah. And I also did a, cup, a TV show over at uh, Channel 7. Oh, really? uh, called Log Login TV. That's what I want my one Miami for. Oh, I did not know that. I thought you won it for a special. Well, no, like I know that. I, the Sammy. other the other Emmy I have is a sports Emmy. The other Emmy I have. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was for uh, we did a uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, beta breakers. Beta breakers. Yeah. Yeah. And you were the comic relief. That's I think right. you offered cheese platters too. We went through a phase where we offered people cheese platters just randomly. Like you sent me to the Oakland Convention Center with a cheese platter to look up Wolf Blitzer, who was in town, the newsman. Really? I, I didn't remember doing that, but I probably did do it. I sent you over with a cheese platter for a Wolf cheese Blitzer. Platter. And the best part was we we get there and we find out where he is and he's only one floor away. So I'm riding up the escalator trying not to drop this cheese platter. <laughs> and then he and I crossed on the elevators and I said, Wolf Blitzer, welcome to Oakland, San Francisco Bay Area. We want to welcome you. The Alex Bennett Show welcomes you with a cheese platter. And he was in the- He's <laughs> going said, down, down the elevator and you're going up? Yeah, here's your cheese platter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there were, I remember there were buffalo wings in it. And I said, yeah, you've got some buffalo wings. And he goes, yeah, I'm from Buffalo. Buffalo. And I was just like, well, there you go. It was meant to be his kids met. But yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I didn't rem- I don't remember that. But then yeah, again, I don't I remember I anything any longer except what yeah. happened two minutes ago. And you're you're who? Uh, yeah, well, the, you know what the thing that worries me more than mm. those events long ago? Those are kind of easy to remember for me. But it's the, you know, the the cliched, what did I come in this room for? And I used to have like a very organized way of keeping track of my thoughts, like in a conversation. Mm-hmm. Like if it was a two hour conversation, I could keep track of everything and come back to it, you know, kind of as a callback or, yeah. and that doesn't come as naturally anymore. Really? I, Maybe. Yeah. What, what do I forget? I, I, I'll, the, I'll tell you what I forgot the other day. Somebody comes in and I've got, you know, I've got Wi-Fi in the apartment. Or of course, yeah. I've got Wi-Fi in the apartment. <laughs> and and they went, uh, we we want to use your Wi-Fi. What's the, what's the uh, password? And I'm thinking and going, I don't remember the password. Yeah, and it's and you know, the reason that was is that when I set the 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 Wi-Fi, that was like ten years ago. Yeah, and I never had to change it, mm-hmm. so I didn't know yeah. what the passwords were. So I finally I went on to uh, my uh, my account over at over at uh, uh, where, 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 uh, Verizon, and uh, I w- was able to look it up there. Well, that's good. Yes, because but, but, my... but I couldn't remember, and I went, yeah, I, I I remember most of my passwords. I'm pretty good about that. You know? Yeah, it's very disheartening when you can't remember something that you know almost as well as you know your middle name. Or you can't remember your middle name. But my husband is very good about that. He keeps like a log, a library of our past. Well, he, he's very, he's, I, I noticed when we were with him, he's very uh, keeping tabs of everything. You know? Yeah, he's very detail oriented. Yeah. In fact, I yeah. think we discussed a little bit about that, and I said that we were, I'm I'm that way too, you know. Yeah. I'm not not to the point where I'm obsessive compulsive, but to the point where I make sure I know where I've got my passwords. So I've got my passwords in one place, and I look them up, and I see what the password is. I look there; I hadn't changed it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. See, that's that's when you're relieved and kind of annoyed. So finally, I got them on there. 
you know. Yeah. So. Well, I did the same thing once. I had to, a friend of mine and I were going to go to Greece, and I couldn't find my passport. And I had gone to Illinois to stash my stuff until I knew what I was going to do. Mm-hmm. And you can't get a passport without your birth certificate. And so I, I just like hemmed and hawed, and it, we needed to get it yeah. like soon, a rush order. So it was like $200 more. And so I knew where the birth certificate was, but I thought, I have no idea where the passport is. So I, I resigned myself to the fact, pay the 200 bucks, and I go, and in my birth certificate envelope, there's my passport. Mm-hmm. So, but, but you can't use it then. It's just like. You know what happened? Got- this just froze up. The picture froze up on us, on my recording. Really? On my recording, yeah. It doesn't even have it give us the dignity of being pixelated. Let me see. Let me pause recording. All right. Yeah, we were frozen there for a couple of for a minute or so. Where I don't know any of the songs from Frozen, or we could have broken into a. Melody. Yeah, we, but we froze on the video being recorded. Everything's going wrong today, folks. Now is a Mercury still in retrograde? I don't give a shit. Yeah, I have a theory that when Mercury is in retro game, what does that what does that mean? Oh, now we're in sync too, which is good. Yeah, well, things are supposed to be screwy. Things that you can normally rely on technically and with machinery and with computer yeah. issues are prone to go awry. And so, when when, you know, when it's in retrograde or something, yeah. yeah. But I have a theory that, that because I'm an iconoclast, when Mercury's in retrograde, everything is going great for me. <laughs> like, <laughs> keep it on, Mercury. <clears throat> yeah, I just figured out the best way for me to get myself back in sync is to <laughs> stop recording and keep going and start going. But we froze up there, folks. This we is fro- amazing, <laughs> amazing. We, we usually never had problems with this. We're yeah. great little copers, though. You know, we can cope. We flow. Right. Well, there was also something. Well, anyway, here's what I hate, okay? And I came up against this, and Marjorie is so pissed at it, too. I <laughs> I hate these numbers. They say, we want to identify you. Would you please go and put in, you're going to get an email from us right now, and put in the numbers you see. It's a scam is my first No, 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 no. You, you do this all the time. If you go somewhere, let's say you go to your account uh, at, at AT&T or something. Yeah. And then they want to identify, make sure it's you because they haven't heard from you in a while. So they're going to send you a list, a group of numbers. Yeah. That you then have to put put in to make yeah. good get further. You know that when you do that? Oh, that yeah. That happens all the time and I hate it. You know what? I don't know why everybody wants our social security number. You know, you order a pizza and they want your social security number. What's with that, Bogosky? It's yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, they want your. But they want they want this number, and then uh, you have to put it in, and then you can go forward with whatever your business was. Your and life can continue. And sometimes, I don't get their email, so I never get the number. <laughs> You know, you I mean, go- folks, let's let I could you just have a little thing I can check that says I really don't care if somebody steals my stuff. Right. Just if just some, just yeah. don't bother me with this crap. With these numbers, I got to put in endlessly. Uh, but yeah, but we haven't seen you in a while, or you're on a different computer. Right, Here, right, just right. send us these numbers. Yeah. Oh, fine. You know. And like someone may have hacked into your pickleball membership. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but anyway, you know, getting back to uh, what was happening in San Francisco with the uh, with the Loma Prieta uh, in '89. Loma Prieta, you know, I was out of work and it was very depressing. You know, I finally had to go to Florida to find a job. That yeah, was that have... was hell, folks. You, you, I know you don't like. Well, my husband lived in Miami. He does not like Miami, but his well, Miami's place. the meanest city in in America. There, everybody there is mean, angry, angry. Yeah. Well, I think that the the language uh, composition, like half people speak Spanish, half English, theoretically, but I think Spanish is becoming the prevalent language in Miami, mm-hmm. and I think people don't want to admit that they're a little. You know, biased or little. Hey, they can speak American, a bird. You know, but mm-hmm. 
Wait a minute. Did you go? No, oh, I, there I, you go. I just clicked just something. I'm I'm out of it today. Just yeah, keep but, going. You know, but yeah. the thing is, you don't want to say that. It's so politically incorrect. Mm-hmm. And so then it just it you know, then it festers and you become angry. Yeah. Yeah. It, oh, it's yeah. even cold, huh? Yeah. So yeah. I I you know, I, I just I remember the little, the Loma Prieta quake. Yeah, yeah. Me too. it made me homeless. Anyway, I think we've got everything set up. So next week, she's not going to be out of sync and nothing wrong <laughs> is going to go on. So we've got um, it settled. What is your husband? Um, is he making something for lunch? Can you hear? Yeah, he's yeah. making he makes lunch is a big deal around him. He uh, yes, he's a uh, very into lunch and he usually has an assembly of all the good nutritious food groups. Mm-hmm. And uh, he will whip those together. Yeah. It's always different. But, yeah, du jour today, I think maybe some butter chicken. There could be some homemade chili on the menu. And then I, ta- I take it you don't cook. I never have. Anyway, never. We, we've run out of time. We'll see you again <laughs> next week, okay? Okay, I'll learn to cook between now and then. That's Lori Thompson, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye, Lori. Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. That's our favorite um, (laughs) co-host. That's Lori Thompson. I love her. I really do. Uh, She was in town a few weeks ago and hung out with us. We've had a lot of people coming. Now that I think about it, a lot of people coming through. I had, uh, let's see here, we just had uh, Bobby... Uh, Vickers or Bubaloo Vickers or uh, Bobby, as we call him, Bobby Vickers, Robert Vickers. Um, he was a, a lot of people know I'm talking about, Bubaloo Vickers, and, uh, people who are from the Bay Area. Uh, and then we had, uh, let me see here, oh, then right after that, like the, the, uh, within 12 hours after that, we had uh, Albert Reynoso and his wife, and she came, they came here for about five days. So basically, uh, I, we've had haven't had this house to ourselves until the last day or so. So, yeah, it was okay. It was nice. It was nice having all those people here. I I, I especially uh, I like all of them. I mean, I like uh, Bubaloo is uh, we call him Bubaloo. Uh, that's what I'll call him because people in the Bay Area know him as Bubaloo. Uh, it was just, uh, just he and his wife are terrific, and she's a she's a doctor. She's a children's doctor. And uh, then, uh, right after that, man, uh, here comes Albert Reynoso and his wife, and they were here for about five days, and uh, that was the story of our life here. So we've had quite a uh, quite a situation here for the last. Uh, week or so uh and then uh, let's see a few day a few a few weeks ago oh yeah uh I, I did they didn't stay here but Lori and her husband uh came here uh and uh i uh we had i've had a wonderful time with these people it's nice to see them you know but anyway where do we go we got some people here only about two so i'll admit them now and if anybody else wants to call the show you can call and uh, here's uh, Charlie Wallace, and he is followed by the lovely and attractive uh, Josh Wheeler, who's, uh, where, where are you again? You're in uh, Ohio, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What part of Ohio again? I live just, I live about 15, 20 miles south of Columbus. Columbus, okay. Uh, right in the middle, basically. Yeah. Because we have quite a few people call the show from Ohio, uh, especially on the especially on the Monday show. Yeah, I'm like south of the middle line of Ohio that I yeah. have runs through, but uh, yeah, you know, Columbus is about right in the middle. Yeah. So anyway, um, did anybody uh, happen to uh, see uh, Kamala on uh, on Fox tonight? Uh, well, I, know, I didn't realize it was tonight. I'd heard she was going to do it, but. Yeah, I didn't watch it live, but I watched. I went and watched some stuff on YouTube from it, and I think I think she did fine. I th- I think she was in hostile territory, and I think she was reacting to that. Maybe she shouldn't have, shouldn't have react overreacted to it, but you know she pretty much yeah, felt she was she was doing battle. 
and, and and so that's what was uh, oh, I didn't realize it was tonight I'd heard she was going to do it but yeah I didn't watch it live but I watched it went and watched some Jeff stuff I, Jeff bro. I still and, double? Uh, I think, I think she you got fine. your speaker on was in hostile just kill your browser get rid of your browser reacting to that maybe you shouldn't have, shouldn't have reacted over it there we go you got it now okay good Here's Brian well, Neary as well. Oh, uh, anyway, where were we? Who was I least, talking? Uh, I suppose at least you did the interview, you know. Well, I mean, I think that it was a, a brave thing to do. I think that she knew she was going into hostile territory, and that's as it was going to be. But if you're going to go somewhere, that's the place to go because that's where the people who don't like you are. And maybe you can win them over. Now, I don't think she won over anybody who didn't like her. Okay. Right. Because she was uh, she was a little combative, but she had to be because Brett Bear wouldn't sh you know Brett Bear was doing an interview, but he wasn't doing an interview. He was doing a I got to get you kind of interview, and and she felt that I think had he backed off and really just tried to find out who the hell this woman was and what she had to offer the world and did a good straight honest interview. I think it would have been okay, you know, but I think what he did, and this is something I learned a long time ago when people have said to me, oh, you, you know, you had so-and-so on the show and you didn't go after him. And I go, well, you know, if I went after him, what happens when you go after somebody in an interview? What happens? They suddenly lock up. They suddenly become defensive and you don't get anything out of them. All you get are straight answers that they would always give. Uh, what I felt is that what you do is you create a friendly atmosphere. And that puts, the, that, that, uh, that puts them, uh, shall we say, uh, off their guard more than well, if you start attacking them. Right. You know. Well, I mean, I'm sure that. You know, that that was going to be a tough interview because of the way they were going to act, which, you know, was fine. But, I mean, at least she did it. You know, I mean, it, it just showed people that she's taken away that argument that they, uh, you know, can't go around saying, you know, she doesn't do interviews and she only talks to people that are friendly to her and well, all that. Well, that's, that's all that Trump does. He only you goes know, on right. Fox. You know, it's obviously not true in her case. I mean, they're going to keep saying it. But it's not true. You know, the 60 Minutes interviews are always difficult for anybody. I mean, 60 Minutes interviews people, you know, with a lot of questions and, and follow up. And, you know, the, she did the Fox deal. She's been going around doing other stuff. So, you know, if, if, if I mean, so since when is doing interviews with people who disagree with you a uh, uh, qualification to be president? If you believe that it is, that's fine. As a voter, you're allowed to believe that. You know, that's your, your <clears throat> Mm -hmm. choice to set your own criteria for how you choose to vote but i mean what's you know is it that important you know trump doesn't do it right and i don't think that's what makes him not unqualified to be president oh yeah i would be fine with trump if he started going on msnbc <laughs> twice a week uh, suddenly i would like him no that it's because it's not of a qualification right you know right. but opinion. it would show a certain bravery on his part and a certain feeling of what right. he believes is right you know, right. uh, but he doesn't believe anything, you know. Right. So. And, you know, I mean, for all we know, MSNBC does not own the rights to play enough music for him to dance to twice a week. Well, uh, that's yeah, a yeah. lot of money. <laughs> you know. Uh, that, uh, uh, if free. people haven't seen this thing, go on <laughs> YouTube. It's, it, you got to find it. It's, it's, he, Trump was doing a town hall in Pennsylvania. And what he was doing was he brought a whole bunch of people in and they were all going to ask him questions and he was going to answer them. And as it started out, unfortunately, two people passed out because it was so hot. And so then they had to kind of go through that and haul them out of the place and things like that. And that was that, you know. So now he is so, I guess, thrown off or something by this. I don't know that he decides to start playing music. And for the next, what, 37 minutes of this town hall, 
Donald Trump did nothing but play music. And he bobbed uh, and weaved while they played music. The dance, the dance, to, dance to it. Dance to <laughs> yeah. it. Dance to it. Dance to it. Didn't have to answer any questions, though. Right. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I... I don't know. I mean, but if that he was... Didn't, he didn't do his, his classic dance, though, you know? <laughs> no, he did. He did. He did that. But it looked like he's like, doing this. He's trying to, you know, but, but then you know, he's Bill had... Maher, of course... Bill Maher, of course, showed it again this week. I love it. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is that Kimmel and Bill Maher and quite a few other people on television kept saying, what's he doing, jerking off two people at one time? You know, <laughs> with, with, this, with this thing? And, yeah, I, uh, and uh, it looks like that. And you would think that with as many people that are kidding him about it, he wouldn't do it anymore. But he yeah, keeps doing so. it, you know? I mean, did he do the robot? I mean, if he'd have done the robot, I'd probably change my mind about it. Yeah, no, he didn't. Uh, he didn't do that. No, no. And he's a bad dancer. He's a terrible dancer. I noticed. Yeah, you know, uh, I don't. I don't like to really. That's probably why he goes through wives quickly. Yeah. He can't dance. Yeah. yeah. But I, it, I just hmm? I can only imagine if Kamala Harris had danced for 39 minutes at a town hall i i, I mean regardless of what happened it, if it was just to kill time while paramedics carried out dead people or whatever uh, if if to kill the time she had done that i can only imagine what the reaction would have been on you know fox, fox have gone crazy whoever you know i mean it's she's mentally unstable or whatever they would have said you know she's not a serious <laughs> person but it was a crazy well, thing. It was absolutely a crazy thing. Now, uh, the big news tonight that came out is that Kamala Harris is behind Trump by two points. Have you seen this? I don't know where that was. This oh, morning, I'm in jail. Well, all they well, talked about. Uh, tr was try and guess. Yeah. Guess who did the poll? Fox. You got poll. it. Fox. Of course. Yeah. yeah, they talked. They talked uh, on Morning Joe for almost an hour this morning about. Four or five national polls that just came out would have been last night that she was up in all five from anywhere from two to four points. One of them had her at five. Yeah. 52 yeah. to yeah, 47. She went on to, uh, uh, what was it, outnumbered or whatever this morning on on Harris Faulkner show. Yeah. Who was on that? Oh, I don't Trump? Know if you guys talked Tr about that. Trump was on it? Yeah. Yeah. I watched the last. Oh, no. Faulkner did a show, does a show before hers. Before, before the for outnumbered, and yeah, and she he did Faulkner the Falcon show, yeah. yeah, and and again and he, he was would, on that. He was totally out to lunch on that one too. Yeah, yeah. You talk about softball questions. Yeah, there you go. He doesn't look so, well. He doesn't look well either, either, does he? Do you think he looks well? He looks a little. Weathered. He never has. No, he, he really looks. Well. You compare him to how he looked in just the last election that he was in. Yeah. And he doesn't, he looks really not well. Okay. Yeah. Um, however, she has um, chronic rhinitis, which, of course, yeah. Trump said in this interview with Faulkner that, uh, you wow. know, that's a dangerous thing. You yeah, know, that's not good. That's not, that's not good I mean, to she have. She could literally sneeze to death at any moment. Yes. Well, the allergic it's allergic rhinitis. What that is is hay fever. Hay fever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She could, she could hmm? sneeze to death tonight. She sneeze her brains out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but this thing he does is driving me nuts. You know when he he's he's doing this, and according to uh, 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 what's his name, uh, his former press secretary, the one that only lasted seven days or something. McElhaney. Uh, no, what, 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 no, what was his name? The him or the her? No, him. <coughs> oh, um. Uh, yeah. Um, Scaramucci? Scaramucci. Um, there was an old, there was an old uh, story, movie called Scaramucci about a, you know, swordsman or something. But anyway. He says that means he's, he's lying. That means he's lying. But he does it so much now, you can't tell whether he's lying or not lying. You know? But he's always doing this. You know? And and I, I wonder about that. I'm going to bring up something here. 
And uh, let's see if I can. This is called. Let's see if Alex can get uh, killed by uh, YouTube, uh, uh, taken off of uh, YouTube or demonetized by YouTube. Um, I'm beginning to think, and I, I talked to a couple of people that I had in the house this weekend that, you know, we all, all every discussion these days at some point gets around to Trump, okay? And uh, in both cases of two groups of people that were here, we were talking about it. And we kind of believe that Donald Trump, when he got shot in uh, the ear, didn't get really shot. That it's all... Or, or, or his brain leaked. No. That, because here's the thing. Okay, folks, I wish I had done a little work and gotten the pictures and so on. Right after that incident, he shows up at the Republican convention with his ear tampon on. Yeah. You know? And everybody at the convention started wearing them, too. You know, let's all wear the tampon. So they were all wearing this 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 ear tampon. And he had that on, and that was on for about, what, two or three days when he was on camera. Right after that, they took pictures of him, and he had a little, little itty-bitty, like, you know, one of the smaller Band-Aids that you put on here, okay? All right. Two days later, he doesn't have it on at all. There's no sign of a nick, nothing. So I think that the whole thing about him getting shot was a phony. Or at least he got shrapnel, because some people got killed. I mean, there's, somebody was shooting with yeah, bullets, a okay? A couple people got hit in that interview right. with them the other day. Yeah, but did he get hit? Uh, there's no sign that he got hit. You know, uh, yes, uh, Alan. So let me, let me try this. <clears throat> um, I... I I don't really know if he got hit or didn't get hit. I doubt it was shrap metal. All the bullets were going behind him, hit other people. But <clears throat> um, a 22 caliber bullet is what's fired out of this thing. It's a .223, actually. But in any case, people get their ears pierced with bigger piercings. And a day or two later, it's pretty much healed. And so... To go by that you don't see anything in his ear lobe where he got hit or up upper here is uh, there's a, a difference. There's a, dif def there's a difference with getting your ear pierced and getting a bullet. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. nicking your your, nicking your ear. Uh, you're going to have a supposedly a much worse. I mean, all you get is a little thing that goes in because you've you've taken a very thin needle. That uh, yeah. you know, you know, I've had my, both my ears pierced at one time, and in neither case did they even bleed. Okay, okay. Oh, I mean, I've never had a piercing. Yeah, I mean, right after you do the out. piercing, you immediately put in the earring, and there was no blood or anything like that. But the kind of the kind of thing he had, I mean, the amount of blood that he had, it should have been worse when he finally took it off and you could see it. And f what five six days later. There was nothing there. So, I mean, how real is that situation? Yeah, but even if it was shrap metal, and you were right, or, or shrap metal of some kind, the monitor or something got hit, it would leave a mark, too, three or four days yeah. later. Well, I, I have another question for you. The guy mm. who shot him, what have you heard about him since? You know, yeah. you, huh? The FBI, the FBI's... Got their mouth shut on it. Oh, they've got their mouth shut on it. Why? Why is their mouth shut on it? I mean, there's I something know. weird about that guy that they're not revealing. He's a Republican? No. Oh, he was a Republican. He was. Oh, yeah, he was a Republican. I have, I have no idea. I have no idea why. Uh, Everybody that's come after him has been a Republican or an Independent. Yep. I mean, I have a theory that the thing was all set up, and this guy was like. Uh, the Patsy. It, it's possible. Let's say Iran set the guy up, found a Republican kid. Forget about Iran. It was a nobody. I, I, I think it could very well have been the Trump people who set the whole thing up. Mm. Huh? Huh? Okay. You don't. You, you wouldn't put. Well, you you don't, don't put that past Trump. I don't want to believe uh, no, it. But I don't put it past him. You, you don't no, want to believe it, past. but you don't want to put it past him. Exactly. Yeah, nope. 
I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past them. Yeah. To get one of them little ketchup pouches they use on the set. Well, uh, but you there. know what? But what yeah, you get? What you get is a, it's it's called yeah. it's called a squib. Yeah, I know. And they knew, use it in movies. And you know, yeah. he touched the ear. Why he touched the ear? You know, I mean, immediately there should have been more damage. Let me put it that way. I mean, how <clears throat> how can something so nick you with a bullet? that you don't five days later have anything showing. Who's the doctor who uh, I mean, checked him out? You notice he hasn't made a statement, whoever that doctor was. Well, why, why should he? Why should but he? we haven't heard about the guy. I don't even know. Did they bury him? Did, you know, you didn't even hear about a burial. They buried Trump? That's cool. No. No, but you don't hear anything about that oh. guy. Oh, There's the something kid? very phony and funny about all of that. Well, and the second you, thing was, the second uh, one wasn't even a, um, a, a assassination attempt. The guy right. didn't even shoot at him. That's right. Okay, so That's don't right. call it in this two. This, he had two assass assassinations. At least get a shot attempts. off, then you could say, yeah. 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 <laughs> if he got a shot off or if he, yeah, I mean, if he was even in the bushes with a gun pointing at him. I mean, he wasn't even doing that. Too, Paul, we know. Absolutely. Yeah, that could be you know, set up either. That, that, that would be yeah. the setup. Having the guy. That's right. Shooting. That's the setup where you sit there all night. Was, maybe the guy was shooting groundhogs. Well, I mean, he, he obviously there was something going on there with the guy, but I don't know if he was out to shoot Trump. We don't know that. We don't know. Are you are you saying that it could possibly something came from a tinny roof and not the grassy knoll? <laughs> a tinny roof and not the grassy knoll. Ted Cruz you know? in the library with the gun. Remember? Yeah, yeah. But, you know how I know there's a God, Alex? I figured it out. God really exists. Really. Yes, because he saved Trump. He didn't want him to come upstairs. <laughs> you keep him. I don't you want him. him. I don't want, want him up, up here. No. Yeah, no way he's coming up here. And, he's not and, coming and, up here. And, and, and the devil doesn't want him either. No. Where is he? He's in limbo, thing. right? Is that what they call it? Purgatory. Thing. Purgatory, yeah. 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 Interesting thing. If Trump had not turned his head to the right, at, you know, a few seconds before, if it was a bullet, it would have penetrated his skull and probably killed him. Yeah, yeah, and, so, and but, but also I mean I it. question, yeah, I really. que you know I'm question how it clipped his ear, but it didn't hit it his head. It looked like that if you watch it. Okay, yeah. and didn't hit his head. I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, hey folks, you know, for oh, years they were, were talking years. about the uh, like about the Kennedy assassination. So if I can be that, this way that, about that, Trump, I just think yeah. there's something very phony about that assassination. That's the part attempt. of it, though. If somebody shot a real live bullet and just yeah. nicked him, he has to be a damn good shot. Yeah. And yeah. that's the only that. part that throws you off is, yep. you know, if he did nick him, boy. You know, it, it, not it, only lucky, but the guy's a good shooter. Who was he, 300 yards away? The, the day after, he had, he had had some Boy Scout training or Cub Scout and was a horrible shot with a twenty two rifle. This thing is a lot more complicated to shoot than a twenty two. I mean, it's not. I mean, to shoot accurately, this AR is a lot more. And if this kid was that bad a shot in in Cub Scouts, how did he pick up this assault weapon? And right. we never and saw the assault weapon. We never. Oh, yeah. We never. The, they didn't do any ballistics on it that we heard of. No. How do we know he even shot a bullet out of that gun, and that that bullet didn't come from somewhere else? Well, I don't know. There are people behind Somebody Trump who is that. an expert shot and can miss his ear and accidentally shot the people in the crowd who were stupid enough that. to be sitting behind him. I still don't understand. I don't understand either. Why would you sit innocent people, guys, behind the president? Well, they always well, do. You know what I'm saying? The, well, I wouldn't want to be there. So they, like, they're, they're props. He wasn't the president. No, but I mean... Mm -hmm. I don't. That's what I was going to ask you guys. Brian, like a rally like that, Alex. Right? I'll, should, I'll get to you in a second. Nobody be able to Brian. be sitting behind him mm -hmm. for that reason alone. No, they, yeah. that's where they stick all the black people. Oh, oh, now it makes sense. <laughs> black, <laughs> black, blacks for blacks Trump. For Trump, right? Yeah. You that one guy has the sign yep. "Blacks for Trump." Blacks and glasses, Trump. yeah, yeah. No, but, I just, um, yeah, I, I don't, yeah. Not, I don't understand how how the Secret Service would let a person up on that roof. That, yeah. That's where they that's would be. Thing. 
Wouldn't, mm-hmm. wouldn't, wouldn't Secret Service be on that roof? That's like a I, prime area for them all to have I know a visual on things. Is we've okay. heard we've heard nothing mm-hmm. about that guy. We've not heard nothing about a burial. Right. We've heard really we've heard nothing about him. We've heard nothing about the gun. They've never shown us the you know there was never a picture of the gun or they they usually when you have things like this they eventually show you the rifle you know to say this is what he tried to do it with we haven't heard anything zero zilch why is that so my 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 question here and it, it, not with Donald Trump but with the kid is the kid is laying on top of one of these storage containers or a roof and after he fired the shots. One of the police snipers that was up as high as him or higher shot the kid, killed him, an instant shot to the head. Mm-hmm. And they showed, you know, they took cameras up there and showed the rifle laying next to him. Obviously, it could still be a setup. And the kid could have been faking it or he could have been shot. I haven't seen any pictures of the dead kid. I have. You have? Yeah, Has anybody? First couple days. First yeah, couple really? days. Yeah. Really? Yeah, oh, okay. there you go. I mean, I think you saw a picture of from far, far further away. No, of, they were on the roof of the body. They were on the roof of the building, standing uh, right there on the body, and but it was blurred. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, my question you is, it, I, it, you know, I mean, usually we we they show the gun and they've got the gun all over the place, and the they show there. the guy and they show his pictures a lot. I think they showed his picture once, and that was it. I mean, how many people in this country above the age of four don't know what an assault I, I mean, this is an attempted presidential assassin. Do they usually treat assassins with, with, with complete uh, mystery and, hey, goodbye? No, you've got the body. You've got the weapons. You can now do some checkups on them. They, they, we don't even know anything about him. He wasn't president when this happened. But no, but we didn't know. We don't know anything about this guy. I know. There's tight lips, and I don't understand why. And usually they make a big deal. This guy did this, and he did that, and, you know, whatever. You know, I, I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. So. This whole thing doesn't I mean, I watched that thing. I heard you talking in the beginning with the pencil. When they carried that guy out. He had no shirt on, and only when they carried him out from that rally. And Trump, like you said, he's bizarre. 30 minutes of doing nothing but playing the YMCA. What do you mean from the rally? I, what oh, are you the talking rally, about? Yeah, whatever that thing was. That a rally yesterday? What was it? It was a, it was a press. Yeah, it was hall. a it was a town hall. I was, oh, I'm sorry. That was a town. They carried him out with no shirt on, with his hand up. <laughs> Funny thing is, Christy Nome was doing the same shit, oh. nagging him on and going, "What am I doing up here?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, it was it, it you know. I, I but uh, what do you mean they were hauling somebody away? They weren't hauling. Yeah, they carried anybody. that guy who was uh, he must have fell from the exhaustion, oh, and yeah. he had no shirt on. If you watch the video again, well, he was it was totally exhaustion awkward. because it was heat yeah. exhaustion, very hot. Don't they have air conditioning in the place? Well, right. I think well, it was, Tony gets turned on to people with no shirts. On. I might be wrong, but I think this was outside. Oh, was it? It well, was in the crowd. Is yeah, what, is what I heard. If not, it I and it wasn't a inside the fact that they didn't air condition. It shows you well. They must have. It must have been air air conditioned on some level, because Trump wasn't sweating up a storm. No, and it's pretty oh. cool out right now. I mean, especially us. for something no, cool dance. out here. But down in Pennsylvania, it could have been really hot. And five thousand people stuck in a little place like that too. I don't know like if it was that many people. That, that's AI. There were three people in the room. They don't know. He, <laughs> he, I don't think he's getting that, he that, like a that much, normal, you yeah. know. But I just don't, uh, you know, I mean, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me, any of these incidents, you know. Right. In fact, we haven't heard a hell of a lot about this other guy who they caught who was hanging out in the bushes with it. The bush, that yeah. seems yeah. to me. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. don't hear much about him either. Uh, you would think, usually they, hey, you know, I mean, look what they did when, when Kennedy was killed. They paraded yeah. Lee Harvey Oswald in front of the press. But he was yeah. president, mm-hmm. Kennedy. Trump's not president. Yes, but Trump but Trump was president. Right. That qualifies him. And nobody nobody took a shot at him. I don't understand that. Yeah, it was an indoor rally. It wasn't what? It, it was, was an indoor rally. Was it indoor rally? And, and it was, so people and it was that. that well, I don't know if it was that. It may have been a so small had, event. Had the guy in the bush is take a shot and hit him. Trump. 
That might have been an older one. It, it, it definitely would have done a lot more damage. The, the weapon that they recovered, the FBI, was an SKS, which is a knockoff of an AK-47. Doesn't shoot a 22, it shoots a 30 caliber bullet, much bigger, much more powerful. So, but if that, if he was going to, if the, he probably figured the guy with the 22 rifle, the assault weapon, he would, he would up his game plan if he was actually going to shoot Trump. He didn't get a shot off. So how is it? In a, it's an honor. He wasn't now. even trying. Right. You know, he just had his little gun, and they they saw him with his no, gun. I mean, and... somebody saw him in the bushes. They, they they fired at the the rifle, you know, and they missed the Secret Service, and he jumped in the car and left. And somebody in the parking lot got a picture of the license plate and gave it to the police. And so a couple miles down the road, well, they stopped the car. And it's gotten to be them. that it's a secret what service they in fact perform. So you know. But anyway. Well, I think the Secret Service yeah, got burned in the first attempt. Yeah. Attempt. Now, Brian is home tonight. Are you home tonight or at the office? I'm home. Oh, huh? Oh, I'm home. You're home. Okay. Yes. Just one yeah. long week, but I'm home. You're looking, you look kind of exhausted. Yeah. Yes. What do you mean? Long what happens work? when you get the big bucks? Long days at work, and then uh, I watch uh, Stephanie play flag football on Tuesday and Thursdays. So I watched her play last night. She played football. Flag, flag football. football. Yeah, she's on varsity. Yeah. What? What's it called? Flag. Yeah, flag football. Flag, flag football. Oh, flag football. That's the for, one where you put the flag on your butt or whatever, and yeah. people have Hips. to. Yeah. Hips. Yeah. They had yeah. that when I was a kid too. Yeah, so it's yeah. So I stay that, and that's late. That's like seven to like eight o'clock, and then I drove her home, and then uh, drove home. So yeah, yeah. She's long, a, long days. She's quite athletic, isn't she? Uh, Stephanie, this is Stephanie, a sixteen-year-old. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. yeah. she's uh. No, yeah, I I laughed at her because I when I when we uh, I drove her home last night. I said, I never see you run so fast <laughs> except for when you're playing. <laughs> And she says, yeah, because I'm running after the football or, you know, trying to get open. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, so they fun. when they want to, huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because, I mean, when, when all of us played sports in high school, I mean, I remember, like, the rival team came to our our parking lot and, like, we all, like, took over their car and they all went running and all that stuff. But nowadays, <laughs> their rival, they played their rival the second game last night. You know what they do is they go on they go on uh, social media and they take film from their games and they make fun of them <laughs> like like they were they were talking a lot of smack a lot of smack so, yeah. so th this is the rival so they they played the first game and uh, Stephanie's high school won by in overtime and now they're gonna play again you mm -hmm. know for like you know for they they play two times a year and they were. On Instagram and everything, they were doing all these detail things, like and, and like making fun of the school and everything. And then Stephanie's team won by one point at the very end. Yeah, so it was really exciting. But you know, it, it's like a and different then they, level they go on social media now. and trash talk them. Yeah, it's like a totally different thing in <laughs> high school now. Where they, they're going to social media and you know they they do like video clips and they're making fun of some of the kids, you know, like in detail. And then you know they won again, but. It's just different level than we I used rest to. my case. Computers are no no good. I'm going along with <laughs> Bub, Larry Bubbles Brown on this one. You know, <laughs> no, I mean everybody is like you know trashing everybody else, and it's not it's not good. You know, the, the, uh, whatever happened to the thing about the uh, the uh, the fun is in the playing of the game, not in the trashing of the other team. You know? so, yeah. 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 Uh, some people want to just play. Yeah, some people just want to play. Yeah. Right. And the other one is get involved and they want to win. Yeah. They, they want to be better. Yeah. They want to learn. Anyway, what does it say yeah. on, on your shirt tonight? Uh, oh. oh, my favorite childhood memory is my back not hurting. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. yeah. So do I. Why is it a lot of the ones you're wearing now are refer to your age? You know? Because I'm old. Because I'm old. Well, you're what? You're 72? 74. 74? 
I mean, that's ancient, right? Well, he's 10 years yeah. younger than I am. You know? Yep. And he's 10 years older than I am. Oh, really? And I'm probably in worse shape physically than him. <laughs> uh, you don't run around four hours two or three times a week. No, definitely not. Well, you know, you do get a lot of exercise in what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, I went to my, my uh, physical therapist today. And I complained, and I said, I hate to tell you, but all the stuff I said, I've been doing all the stuff, you know, <clears throat> religiously. As I say a prayer every time I do it. Uh, but I'm doing all the exercises at home and uh, re regularly and uh, all that I'm supposed to do. And I said, I'm only getting worse. And she was kind of concerned about that. So she yeah. backed me off of some of my stuff I was doing. Uh, the uh, stand-ups from a sitting position and things like that, which, you know, she said, eventually you're going to get to where you start improving. She said, but, uh, I, you know, we, maybe we have to back off on what your workouts a little bit. So we'll back off on stuff. And, uh, um, uh, you know, she, she's very good. I like her a lot. And I, I started asking her, what do all the different things do and what are they affecting and why are you doing them, you know? Some are for balance. Some are just for strength in the core areas, you know? And stuff like that, but um, it, it's uh, it was it, it it's concerning to me that they don't like it gets worse. So I stopped doing the uh, sitting up in the chair, and she said, "Well, that's good." And I, I said, "I felt slightly better." So, mm -hmm. so it's my big my big deal today. Wednesday is your allergies under control. Yeah, they haven't been bothering me today, but you you sent me another thing. I haven't used the old ones up yet. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't know you were having allergy problems, so I sent you some. Whenever I see an Amazon package coming to me, and it says Alex Bennett, I know it's from him. Okay. Because all my Amazon packages come to Ben and Schwarzman. No, oh, well, there you go. <laughs> you see, and so when I look at it and I see Alex Bennett, I go, oh, "It's got to be. It's got to be him." Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, you you complained a couple times a couple weeks ago about having allergies, and I yeah, they, they weren't. They, they ran out of pills, so I sent you some more. They haven't been bad today, but my eyes have been tearing a little bit, you know. But uh, outside of that, today I, I was feeling uh, much better. You know? Yeah. Try try to spell Schwarzman. Oh my God. <laughs> and spell it right. They spell it right though all the time because I they have it there spelled yeah. right, yeah. you know. So it's not being, you know, butchered by uh, yeah, <laughs> butchered by somebody at, at yeah, right exactly. So whatever. So uh, other than that, um, I'm trying to think of what else has been happening in this world that. Uh, it's all been pretty quiet elsewhere. I mean, the United States has finally said to Israel, if you don't start doing something about Gaza and start lightening up on Gaza and sending aid to Gaza, uh, we're not going to send you any more weapons. That's it. You know? I mean, you have to show some good faith that you don't want this thing to keep on going and you don't want people to be dying who shouldn't be dying. But it's like Israel doesn't care. It just doesn't care. And, and uh, when I see these people, you know, who are not, they're not combatants, okay? They're just people who got a family and they happen to be stuck in Gaza. Can you imagine? Those people are actually stuck in Gaza. Yeah. It's like, yeah, uh, it's... Cut. Huh? It has to be like being stuck in Miami, right? Yeah, you know, it's like being stuck, it's like being stuck in a prison. Yeah. You know, they worse. can't they can't get out of it, and then all of a sudden, here come the bombs. They, you know, yeah. I mean, and they're trying to raise families in this and all of that, and I just feel sorry for them. And because of all that's happened, a bitterness has been created that I don't think is ever going to be solvable. I think this is going to go on for the next hundred years because there are are kids who are growing up in Gaza in the midst of all of this who have learned to hate Israel. But they learn that before the war. Started. Yeah, they though they learn that if they learn or was being impregnated impregnated in their minds early, right. it's been re in it's been reinforced. Yeah. 
reignited, absolutely. Been reinforced by what the, Israel mm -hmm. has done to them, okay? And uh, this was the same reason why you had a lot of, why Hamas started to exist and Hezbollah, because the uh, uh, Palestinians really got pushed into the desert. They were pushed out of their homeland. And so there was a bitterness that was attached to that that, you know, goes on to this very day. I think Netanyahu wants to push Gaza into the ocean. I think yep. Netanyahu, does, he's trying to do what Trump is doing by running for president. Absolutely. He's trying to prevent prosecution. They're both from, cut from the same cloth. Yeah, block. because if he, ever, if he ever is thrown out of office, the next thing they're going to do is arrest him. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and to prevent that from happening, he asked, you know, why do you do what you did in Gaza and the next day you're going and getting Hezbollah in, uh, in, the, in the West Bank? Well, why, well, why all well, of a well, sudden does that become a thing? Well, because they're firing missiles in Israel. No, they weren't. They weren't. You're watching a different newscast. Uh, 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 NBC uh, last night showed missiles. Coming yes, but that's Israel. now because they've been having, oh. been having missiles going at them. Right, right. Okay, before. No, right. Yeah. You know, I mean, who who's, who shot the first missiles into there to any extent? I mean, Hezbollah has been shooting Israel. missiles for years. So have a couple of other countries, you know. Yeah. But And also, they, they what's stupid about them shooting those missiles into Israel is they'll never, never do any damage. Because you've got that, uh, what do they call it, the Iron Dome? Iron Dome. Yeah. Uh, which is basically just a bunch of missiles that shoot down their missiles. So what have you done? You've just sent 20,000 missiles uh, that uh, cost you a fortune to build, and uh, now they're all gone, and nothing did any harm. I think a couple land every now and then they get through, but, you know. Yeah, but they get, Israel lets them get through if it's an unpopulated but, area. But it's it's got to it's got it's got to stop. And the only people that can make it stop is us, you know, by threatening Israel. No more. You know, you've got to start doing something to prevent this from becoming a real bad deal. I think, I think it's an idle threat. Do you think so? Yeah. yeah. You might be right. Yeah. You yeah. might be right. But why? What does Israel have over why, us? You know, it's kind of a, a little a little too late at, in, in the juncture. Why didn't Biden stop sending missiles? They just sent some new missile system and Americans to shoot it. Okay, so what Israel is the fear? Companies? What is the fear the United States has? What what is the uh, well, double whammy that Israel has over us that makes us idea. say, oh well, you know. No we're, not gonna, we're not going to. We're not going to be called APAC, donating hundreds of millions of dollars against political candidates. They mm -hmm. to... Yep, and there you go. And what I'm yep. saying is, is that the reason why we back Israel and why we keep letting them exist with their bad behavior, is because they feel that if they don't, uh, the Jews will come get them. You know, the Jews got money, and they're not going to, you know spend it on our campaigns and uh, uh, we don't want to upset the Jews. Well, I find well, that I find that an anti, I find that a very anti-Semitic notion that to begin with the Jews have money. You know? Yeah, I don't know. Well, they did spend 18 million dollars to kick Jamal Bowman out of office. Really? Yes. Who, who is Jamal Bowman? He yeah. was He's from New York. What do you mean? Who is the representative in the U.S. Congress from New York? No, it's not Jamal Bowman. That's not his name. Oh, that's Jamani, the other guy, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's, they have a lot of ads for him. Yeah, you know, I know his name. My brother would know it. Oh, shit. He's sleeping, though. Yeah. It'll come to me. The I same one that rang the, the, the uh, fire alarm in the, in the Capitol and got into trouble for that. Really? I don't remember that. I don't know. Yeah. I don't remember it either. <laughs> well, no, refresh. Was, was, was uh, he Jewish? I, I think he expressed well, let, let, some anti-Israel support type stuff early on, and they targeted him in a special election. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because it was a standalone special election, they were able to flood the market with media and things like that against him. You know, they spent a lot of money. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, all I know is I, when I was growing up, I kept being told, you know, that I'm a Jew and your people have money. And I kept saying, I'd sure like to know where it is because none of it's ever been spent on me. You know, I never knew any Jews who were exceedingly wealthy. I knew some that had some businesses and things like that, but they weren't exceedingly wealthy. You know, describe what exceedingly wealthy is. Representative from New York City. Yeah. And, and what, why did they, why did they go after him? He came out saying that he was against all the what Israel is doing to the Palestinians in Gaza. Oh, wow. And so APAC spent 18 fucking million dollars, most money ever spent on a representative race against him with all kinds of ads and stuff and got him kicked out of office. Really? Yes. I, and where was I? <laughs> yeah, really. I'm in Texas and I knew about that. I know. Well, I'm in a coma. What can I say? You know. I remember um, the guy Santos, Alex. Remember he lied about everything and he wouldn't leave? That I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's he's. Not, and Omey is still not stepping down and they're all quitting around him. <laughs> yeah. We have a mayor who just, you know, he should quit, but he doesn't. You know. I mean, how many times can you go to Turkey and get the kickback? I mean, really? Well, he is that I, much. Is, that, is Turkey that popular that you would go there that much? No, no. Kidding. You know, I mean, every country in the world uh, has business dealings with the United <clears throat> States okay. on one level or another, and if they can buy off a senator to help them with stuff or oh. whatever, in this case, a mayor. In this case, what they want to do is they, they built a, a, a building here in Manhattan, in one of these tall, incredibly tall skyscrapers, and uh, they couldn't get the, um, the fire stuff passed or whatever. And uh, it was looked over by the, uh, by the people that do that sort of thing, and they said, uh, we, can't, we can't give this building a pass here. You've got to do some stuff to fix it up. So they they never pulled in their chips on the mayor of San Fran, of New York, but they did then, and they said do something about it. And he went and got the whole uh, thing passed. And really, what he did is that people were now going into an unsafe building. So that's where it was all terrible, you know. But but that's why uh, you know. And then there, we had another guy over in New Jersey, the Democrat. Uh, what's his name? Who got found guilty of taking money from uh, Egypt? Yeah. From Egypt. He was having gold bull bars in his car. So oh, gold... yeah, that's right. Yeah, they Car him gold. Yeah, I yeah. carry around gold bars in my car. I see gold I... in Costco, Alex. Remember the end of the day? You can buy gold there. Can you buy gold in, in Costco? Yeah. They had little bars. Now yeah. you can buy platinum, too. We walked in, he was right there versus there's some gold. I said, oh, shit. Platinum, too. I, yep. You know something? I must have I a bad Costco because I can't imagine. I can't. I don't ever remember them selling gold. In Long Island City, we went there, Alex, and we, when you enter, they're right in the front where the TVs are, and then there's a little display of versus here's the gold bars. I said, oh, shit. I thought he was joking to me. They, well, they, oh, they, I have a, they, hmm? They've always sold gold and diamond rings. Now they're selling yeah. gold bars. And and this week I saw an ad that they're also like Kevin just said they're selling platinum bars too. Well, I haven't been in my Costco for a year and a half. Oh wow! Because well, we started using Instacart, okay, wow. during COVID, and after COVID was over, we still you know I just order through Instacart and they bring the stuff to me. So, you know. And uh, why should I go over there? I can't walk anymore. So, you know, uh, but I, I, I actually I want to go there because I've got, you know, every year they send you a check. Well, you got your money thing? My brother gets that. You get a check. I get a check for about $100 a year. I've got three or four of them here that I haven't cashed yeah. because I haven't been back to Costco. And when he gets a check, I go crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I can get some. Yeah. And they'll expire. You got to watch it. No, they don't expire. No. Yeah. Oh wait, I'm thinking of something else. Yeah, those don't. Yeah, they don't. I thought expire. you had to use them by the end of the year. No, no, no. They, they, they don't say anything about expiration on there or must use by or whatever. You know. Um, otherwise, I'd somehow figure out a way. I mean, I really wish that you know, I could call up uh, Instacart and they'd come get my money and then yeah. <laughs> cash it and bring it to me. Can't use that city and get a whole bunch of stuff. 
Yeah, well, you know. Cops so. so smart. They don't just send you a check that you can take to the bank. They yeah. send you a check that you have to use at Costco. Yeah, you have to use it checking yeah. out. They will <laughs> give you cash if it's, you know, like let's say you've got $100 on the thing and you spend 80 They will give you the $20 mm -hmm. in cash. But you can't go to the counter and say, here's the $100, give me $100. So. <laughs> right. Yeah, but it's not like you're not going to spend it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we spend it at Costco okay. anyway. Yeah, well, it's kind of like a rebate. You really, you know, yeah. and you're you're just spending it on new stuff. But you know, it, it, I use it for my uh, what do you call it? Membership. You, can you use it for your I memberships? Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Well, maybe I'll do yeah. that next year. I do the same thing. What do you do? Well, what do you do? Do you just t do you go online and tell them? Pay for I my membership the with the money. Huh? I go into the store to the customer service counter and give them the check, and they update my my. Uh, oh, I'm, oh, good. Okay, I'll do that next time. You know, but first I have to go down to the Costco. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's still in the same place. <laughs> I wonder if you have to use the checks, or if you could send them to Kevin and me. I don't think so. It's got my oh, name I think on it. You have it. to use them. Yeah, you have to use them. And I think it has to say you have to. I think you have to have your card. Yeah. In order to cash them in, and you don't have my card, so. Mm. I can make one up, Alex, Alex Bennett. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Whatever. You know. Uh, well, I know the trick to hide uh, when I send you something. Uh, so you know, I mean, um, otherwise uh, there's not, nothing much happening, you know, in the news. Uh, everybody's doing the hippopotamus story. That, that's a big. I was going to ask you a question. Oh, right? you. Oh, yeah. Huh? I was going to ask you. Are you going to go live? I know it's we got a ways to go. Are you going to do a show for election night? I was just curious. No, it's a Tuesday night. I'm not going to work. Are you kidding me? Even on election? <laughs> no, uh, I think probably what we'll do is we'll go on yeah. like at eight o'clock at night. Oh, and the uh, poll close what nine o'clock then? But yeah, hmm? we probably won't know the results Tuesday night. We probably won't. Yeah, I hope he loses. Well, but we can talk about it. You know, there'll be some kind of results in, and we can start talking about it. And that's when the cat when California stuff. Wait a minute, California doesn't come in till eleven. Last. Yeah, really. Well, I can probably go on at 10.30, and we'll, we won't, wouldn't have mm -hmm. missed anything, you know. Uh, and I don't want to, you know, I remember being in California and feeling left out of every election. Oh, because you're right. You're, uh, cause we're, we're well, I lived here. in New York for the longest time, and then I went back to California, and I'm I'm driving across the bridge to go to, it was a KML at the time, to go to KML to do election night coverage. We were going to go on at 8 o'clock, and as I'm driving across the bridge, they call the uh, the the the, uh, the the election for Reagan, and oh, I'm going. What's this all about? I I'm not going to be able to go. So I just I did a U-turn in the middle of the Golden Gate Bridge and went home. You know. <laughs> yes. Now, um, Josh probably can be better answer this, but anybody, of course. Um, there was the biggest turnout of early voting in. Georgia. 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 Yesterday. Georgia. Is, that, is that good for the Democrats or not? Or does that really... That's happen? good for the Democrats, yeah. Is it, I think so, too. Democrats uh, vote early. Um, um, I've already voted, you know. I yes, vote. so have I. Well, but this I think, is, these were lines of people... Oh, vote. yeah. Yeah, that well... And, you uh, have... You know, the, well, I was just going to say kind of the way that she has a pretty good advantage like in the national poll and the popular vote sort of realm yeah. to me the more people that vote overall would be better for her yeah which is what we saw last time right record number of people voted yeah. biden won picked up a lot of states you didn't normally see and the popular vote margin was larger than it was with clinton right Yes. You know, I mean, that's how Trump goes around saying, oh, more people voted for me than never voted for anybody for president. Yeah. Except the guy I lost to would be in parentheses at the end of that sentence, right? You yeah, know except the guy I lost so, to. So, you know, like there'd be a footnote or whatever if it was a paper. But I saw so I was just saying that I think in general, the more people that vote should be better for her because in general, 
all polling indicates in national polling, when you don't break it down by battlegrounds and all that other stuff, you know, more than half the country uh, choose her as the their vote, you know. So I would say the more people that vote, the better. Right? Yeah. In yeah. every state. But yeah. specifically in the states that are going to be highly contested. Yeah. And it would seem to be if people are early voting like that. There's one other thing in Georgia. More people are going to vote. One other thing in Georgia we should mention. They did a whole thing about, I don't know, about pre-voting and when they when you do the ballots and blah, 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 blah. And they passed some laws that were kind of draconian. And today a judge threw them all out. Threw and they them all out. Yeah. Threw them all well, out. Yeah, and they, and, and they, yeah. he said it was just too much work for people to do. Uh, come back to me in four years with this thing, you know, yeah, and and so like consequently, um, all the things the Republicans were trying to do to kind of subvert the vote in Georgia have now been overturned, yeah. and it could be very good for her in uh, yeah. in in Georgia. I mean, Georgia is a predominantly black state. Of course, what is it with a black man? Come on, Charlie. What can, can you explain <laughs> Don't blame that? Me. Don't blame and, me. And is it even true? Is what I want to know. I would ask that question myself. You know, is it the really black guy? Come on. In that way, All or I know is it's the just black man in my family love Kamala Harris. <clears throat> yeah, because I mean that's how these things get started is by Trump going around saying that stuff over and over and over and over and over again. But just because Trump says it a hundred times a day doesn't mean that it's actually the case. Well, it means MSNBC will talk about it as truth, right. you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I probably don't doubt that there is maybe some polling or out there. Well, that there may, I don't know, maybe there's not doing as well as maybe expected or something. But you know, well, she doesn't do as well with men anyway. Right. I mean, but the you problem know. is, you know, when it comes to black men voting for Biden or what I mean, and, and or all other candidates in the past, and it's 90 percent and suddenly yep. she's at 82 percent and they act like that's just the, the world's going to end. I mean, you know, you're asking them for one to vote for a woman, which a lot of people are. Let's be real here. OK, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's it's. And J.D. Vance says, if you're if you're running, if you're, you know, so if, you're <laughs> if you're a man and you vote for a woman, you're a pussy, according to J.D. Well, Vance. I mean, there are, <laughs> look, there are people that don't vote for candidates because of their gender or their race. I mean, I'm not I'm not breaking news to anyone here, am I? No. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no. you know, there. I mean, were there not white men that didn't vote for Barack Obama because he was black and they had traditionally voted for Democrats? So mm -hmm. you could have went around, and I believe that they did, saying Barack Obama had a white man problem. Yeah. Yeah, that's because we live in America. Doesn't yeah. mean you, I got to like it or I approve of it, but facts are facts, you know. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. So I, I don't I, I don't know. I really haven't even looked at it because, it, I mean, it doesn't matter to me as much. But, I mean, what what is she pulling at with black men? I mean, if she was pulling in the... 52 percent or whatever would be one thing but well maybe if I she mean, was pulling black men she'd get all their votes i think women <laughs> overall are voting for her <laughs> you look at brian yeah, <laughs> you look at brian he's just like oh I, well, they, I don't know what that's the numbers alex are, that's but. alex you got it right I mean, I, yes, <laughs> I think we all got it but. they probably all got it but she just not want to admit it okay I mean, anyway in small numbers, but I just can't see a lot of black men going in and voting for Trump. I can't see anybody voting for Trump, but apparently <laughs> I'm wrong. Here, let's the, all let's the music's playing. The guy, let's the guy all, I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to village people later. <laughs> there we go. There it is. There it is. There it is. I got it. I got it. Gee, and I've never jerked off a guy before. You know, I I can still do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh, just two more weeks and it's all over. Is it two weeks? I hope a more. Right. It ain't gonna be them. all over. I'm uh, afraid of my mother that she. she it's three days. Hmm. What? Three three weeks. Weeks. Yeah. Three, well, anyway. three weeks. Hey, listen, Charlie. Good having you here, as always. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we got the black boat. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Josh, good having you here. Thanks for joining us this evening. 
Um, uh, and, uh, and of course, our, our good friend uh, Jeff Stein mm. up there in Connecticut. And uh, also Brian Neary. Geez, you know, <laughs> you, you get some sleep. Relax. Yeah, you look yeah. fine. Yeah. Alan, good having you here. Kevin, always a pleasure having you here. And, and <laughs> Tony, uh, you know, uh, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> you know? Great job. You're okay, <laughs> too. You're okay, too. Anyway, everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? Uh, And uh, let me see here. i got to push a button here and get me. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's it for tonight. Uh, We'll be back again tomorrow night. Uh, uh, Next is uh, Amy Manuel, and she'll be doing a little show called The Intersection. And uh, then uh, we'll be back here again tomorrow. Now, she'll be taking your calls, by the way, on Skype again at Live. We'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.